So we are going to talk about one over one minus X. Now, one of the interesting things about this function is that if you take the derivative of one over one minus X, the result that you get is one over one minus X and then squared. So in other words, this is a solution to the equation Y prime equals Y squared. Now there's one other thing that's kind of interesting about one over one minus X, which is that it has a very simple infinite series. We can write one over one minus X as one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed and so on to infinity. Now that combined with the original result gives us an interesting equation, which is what we get if we substitute this infinite series into both of these parentheses here. The derivative of one plus X plus X squared plus and so on equals one plus X plus X squared and so on squared. This is a kind of interesting result. You might ask, is there a way that we can prove this just using infinite series if we pretend we don't know that this equals one over one minus X. In order to prove this equation, we can go ahead and compute each side separately and then see what we get. On the left, we're taking the derivative of an infinite series. This is a sum of a bunch of powers, one X, X squared, X cubed, and so on. So we can differentiate each of those terms individually using the power rule. So the derivative of one plus X plus X squared and so on, we look at each term separately. The derivative of one is zero. After that, the derivative of X is just one. The derivative of X squared is two X. The next term would be X cubed and the derivative of X cubed is three X squared. And then it would be four X cubed and so on to infinity. So to do this step, we're just looking at the infinite series and then taking the derivative of each term individually and we can add those up. Now we're gonna look at the right side. And to do this, remember that squaring something is the same as just multiplying it by itself. So let's go ahead and write out that multiplication. We're looking at one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus and so on. And then we're multiplying that by one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed and so on. Now, when we multiply these two things together, we're gonna to get a sum of a bunch of powers of X, something like X squared on the left times X cubed on the right gives us X to the fifth. And we're gonna have infinitely many of those, but we have to ask what is the coefficient that goes next to each power of X to the N. Now, in order to do that, we need to remember the basic rules of exponents. The first one is X to the A times X to the B equals X to the A plus B. So if we're asking what is the coefficient of X to the N, what we're asking is how many ways are there to take one power of X on the left and one power of X on the right, multiply them together and get X to the N. Because when we multiply these, any product of something on the left and something on the right will give us an X to the N and the coefficient of that is one because this is one, one X, one X squared, one X cubed. So we multiply these together. It'll always be one times X to the N. So what we need to know is how many ways are there to make X to the N using one term from the left sum and one term from the right sum. Well, let's suppose that the term we take from the left sum is X to the A and the term that we take from the right sum is X to the B. And we wanna make X to the N. We ask how many ways are there to do that? Well, if we take X to the A and X to the B, the resulting product is X to the A plus B. So if we want this to equal X to the N, that just means that we need to have A plus B equals N. And so our new question is, how many ways can we take one exponent from the left and one exponent from the right so that they add up to N? First, we have to ask what exponents we have available to us. And the answer to that is zero, one, two, three, and so on up to infinity. Because one is that X to the zeroth power, X is X to the first power, and then we have two, three, four, and so on. In other words, 
the exponents we have are the non-negative integers. So now we're asking how many combinations, how many pairs of non-negative integers add to n? Well, to figure that out, we can just list them. 0 comma n is one way to do it. And we know that 0 is the smallest possible integer that we could have on the left because we're only considering non-negative integers. So any other pair we look at has to have a bigger value on the left. Well, the next biggest value would be 1 comma n minus 1. And then anything after this will have to have a bigger value on the left. So we can continue like this. It'll be 2 comma n minus 2, 3 comma n minus 3, and so on, until we eventually get all the way down to the other side, where we're looking at n minus 2 comma 2, n minus 1 comma 1, and then finally n comma 0. So these are all the pairs of non-negative integers that add up to n. And how many of these are there? Well, each of these pairs has a different value in the first index of the pair. So all we have to do is count how many of these there are. And that's pretty easy. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to n. So the total number is n plus 1. Because this section is 1 through n, so obviously there are n of those. And then we have an extra one because of the 0. So in total, there are n plus 1 possible pairs that add to n. And that means the coefficient of x to the n in this product is n plus 1. So let's see what that looks like. The resulting product is going to be n plus 1. What is that for n equals 0? Well, that's just 1. So we have 1 times x to the 0. And then after that, if n equals 1, if that exponent is 1, then the coefficient is 2. So we have 2 times x to the first power. And then if we're looking at x squared, then n plus 1 is 3. So it's 3x squared, 4x cubed, and so on to infinity. And now if we compare the result that we got from the derivative to the result that we got from the square, we see that it's the exact same sum. On both sides, it's 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed and so on to infinity. So that's a nice way to see that this equation holds even if we consider both of these as their infinite series. So in this case, we wanted to multiply 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on to infinity times itself. But you might ask, what could we do if we were looking at a more general infinite sum and not something as simple as this basic power series? Well, there is a general way to approach this type of multiplication, and it's called the Cauchy product. So the Cauchy product says that if we're taking the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n, and we're multiplying it by the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of b sub n, that product can be written as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the sum from k equals 0 to n of a sub k times b sub n minus k. So I'm skipping over some convergence conditions here when we're doing this type of product, but if we assume that the relevant convergence conditions apply, this is a way that we can compute the product of multiplying two infinite series. And we can see that this formula gives us the answer that we got right here for multiplying this infinite series times itself. And we can see that if we replace this a sub n with just x to the n, and then we also replace the b sub n with x to the n. So this is asking what is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed to infinity times itself. It's exactly the problem that we were doing up here. And what the Cauchy product says is that this result is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the sum from k equals 0 to n of a sub k, that's just x to the power of k, and then b sub n minus k is x to the power of n minus k. Well, we can take a look on the inside here. x to the k times x to the n minus k, that's just x to the n. So this whole thing 
is the sum from k equals 0 to n of x to the n. So the inside here, x to the n is a constant with respect to k. So we're just adding up x to the k a bunch of different times. How many times? Well, k equals 0 to n, that's n plus 1 times in total. So this is exactly n plus 1 times x to the n. And if we write this out, this is exactly what we found before, that the coefficient of x to the n is just n plus 1. So this would give us the same answer of 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, and so on. So that's a nice connection between the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x and the infinite series form. And there's also a generalization called the Cauchy product that lets us do this type of multiplication for more general infinite series.